look down at our grand scene here. One of America's great stadium spectacles. People still filing in. Stanford will handle the ball first. Interesting, Brent, that Stanford wins the toss and they want the football. David Shaw may be trying to send a message here early to his team. There's a series history. They first met back in 1959. The Badgers have never lost to the Cardinal. Met here in the 2000 Rose Bowl, won by Barry Alvarez and his great running back Ron Dane, who rushed for 200 yards that day. Checked his headset. Bucky's ready. Settle back, everybody. Another American classic is about to begin. Kelsey Young for Stanford. Out to the 20. Seems only appropriate that we bring in Andrew Luck to introduce the Stanford quarterback today. Hi, this is Andrew Luck, class of 2012. Let's meet Stanford's starting quarterback for this year's Rose Bowl, Kevin Hogan, a redshirt freshman from McLean, Virginia. Good luck, Kevin, and go Stanford. I imagine that uh, Herbie, that Andrew will be keeping close eye on the Cardinal today oh, yeah. as he gets ready to take the Colts into Baltimore next weekend in the NFL playoffs. This is a, a bowl game that Andrew Luck did not lead the Cardinal to. As Herbie told you, the Fiesta Bowl last year. Running play on first down with Stephon Taylor, number 33. He's a senior from Mansfield High School, Texas. And uh, Herbie here is the young man who took over in the middle of the season. He started his first road game in that upset of Oregon. You can see his four starts. He's 4 0, beat four ranked teams. And speaking of Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck sending messages to Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator, and also David Shaw after he saw Kevin Hogan step in and say, that's starting to look more and more like our offense from a year ago because of the mobility and the athletic ability that he has at that position. Hewitt motioned out and they come back with Taylor and he is stopped by the middle of that Wisconsin defensive line. Bo Allen, the first to hit him, our impact players for the Cardinal. Yeah, Stephon Taylor is going to have to carry the load offensively when it comes to running the football. Zach Ertz still look to try to isolate, especially on third downs and one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And then Shane Scove and Chase Thomas will lead a very physical and active linebacking crew for the Stanford Cardinal defense. Passage situation here. Cody Whitfield, a freshman, one of the receivers on the field for the Cardinal. Montgomery's your motion man. In trouble. Good on the move. Trying to pick up the first down and steps out of bounds with that fine mobility of his, Herbie. And this is what we've talked about in the last four games in this offense, what he brings to the table. This is the difference. They had him. They had a sack at the very least, make him throw the football away. This is what he's going to challenge with Wisconsin all day. Ability to keep the play alive. His vision downfield, trying to think about throwing the ball downfield. But instead of throwing it, he has the quickness and speed and awareness to be able to find that first down marker to keep this drive alive. Cardinal using receivers to shuttle in the play. Patterson brought this one in backfield is empty offensive line holds up and on first down they come to the great tight end Zacherts Richard Jr. from Alamo California and folks 
one of the best that we have seen the last few years. It's interesting. They go with an empty package. The reason is they want to try to isolate just like that. Try to get Zach Ertz matched up against Mike Taylor and Chris Borland one on one. That'll be a big theme in this game when they want to throw the football, trying to find ways to get the linebackers from Wisconsin who are very physical against the run. Get them out in space and make them defend the pass. Very good fullback and Ryan Hewitt. He stays right ahead of Taylor. Taylor steps outside with that vision, battles to midfield and across it. Another first down for the Cardinal, southward with the stop. Really good job of blocking by the right side of the offensive line. Also, Devon Cahoost gets involved, the juice rather, at the uh, wide receiver. You'll see him come in and get involved off to the outside as well. This offensive line, right now, these first 15 plays that Pep Hamilton is scripting, they're adjusting on the fly, trying to see what Wisconsin's doing. The little wrinkles they're trying to add, and they have to adjust on the fly. Wilkerson. Ran the Wildcat. It's a reverse pass. Turrell going right down the field, and it's caught. Patterson reaches up at the 15-yard line. An outstanding athlete out of McDonough, Georgia, and what a catch. 34 yards. Brett, this was so slow in developing that Wisconsin was there the entire time. Shelton Johnson saw it. The safeties felt it. I don't think Patterson fooled anybody. He just made an outstanding catch in high-pointing the football and going up and being able to somehow secure that. What concentration. Wisconsin was there. It was just a better play by Patterson. Now their first play in the red zone. And it's Stephon Taylor out, fake. They come back the other side of a reverse action for the touchdown with Kelsey Young. He is a converted running back to wide receiver, and he is lethal carrying the football. Kelsey Young scores the game's first touchdown. If you're a Stanford Cardinal fan, it's exactly the way you want to see this game started. What an outstanding drive. Seven plays, five runs, and a couple passes, and they put a touchdown up on the board. Jordan Williamson will beat Oregon with a field goal. And he makes this Stanford seven, Wisconsin nothing. After sending Taylor off to the right, Countering back here with Young. He's a sophomore from Norco, California. The Rose Bowl game is presented by the Vizio Fandemonium Fan Challenge. Learn more at Vizio.com slash Rose Bowl. Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. The new 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost and DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. And we're seeing some of these great views at the Rose Bowl game, courtesy of the Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam. Kevin Hogan with the offense back on the field. Hewitt is off to his left. Taylor. Play action. Hogan rolls off to the right, throws down field to Drew Curl. Last time Stanford had the football, they went right down the field, and a big part of it was his trick. Nice throw here by Terrell, but really an exceptional catch by Patterson. And then they catch him off guard the very next play. The reverse to Kelsey Young. Wisconsin's defense not anticipating it. You can see the big center had an easy way there against the only man left there, the corner from Wisconsin. 19 more yards for the Stanford offense. And they use the Wildcat. Direct snap to Taylor. And Taylor busts for another nine yards on this play. So offense Herbie is having its way against his defense. They are really moving down the field on him. Yeah, and I think right now what we're seeing is a Wisconsin defense that is prepped for three or four weeks. They knew what was coming, but it's one thing to try to simulate this power style 
in, in, in practice. But all of a sudden, these linemen start moving and executing in a way that you're not used to seeing. It takes some time to be able to adjust. Even this style of offense, you know, you typically say that against these up-tempo spread teams, but it's even more so against a physical team that's going to try to pound you like Stanford. Toilolo and Ertz, two tight ends are in this formation. And they will run Taylor and a nice cutback as he comes across midfield to the 46 yard line of Mike Taylor with the stop and, and what happens when they run the power and they, they have their balance is it eventually sets up their play action game because the, the linebackers and they have Wisconsin has two good ones in Mike Taylor and, and Chris Borland they're going to start to really get dialed in on their keys, their run keys. We got to fit better against the run. We got to stop the run. And that's when Pep Hamilton, this player, the next play, do not be surprised to see some kind of play action if those safeties and linebackers are cheating. Play action. Hit on the release. Got a man open. Ertz grabs it inside the five yard line. Oh, baby, what a catch. I just talked about these safeties and linebackers start to cheat up against the running game because there's getting eight and nine yards of carry. You got to look out for Zach Ertz, and that's exactly what happened here. He gets hammered as he throws it by Hamer, but this is the guy that they've got to get the ball to downfield. Zach Ertz, the top tight end in the country, in my mind, 6'6, 252 pounds. And how about the throw by Kevin Hogan? Despite being ready to get hit, he puts the ball where Ertz can make a play on it. Just a great drive here again by this Stanford offense. Hewitt lined up in front of Taylor. Here comes Taylor behind him, battling. Touchdown, Stanford. Two possessions, two touchdowns. Badgers in trouble early. Williamson makes it a 14 nothing lead so they drive 80 yards Herbie and now 79 and it was all set up again a big play here play action on first and 10 they get the ball downfield to Zach Ertz and the very next play to their go to man Stephon Taylor into the end zone and right now the Stanford Cardinal could not do anything wrong they're up 14 here early. You're watching the 99th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. It's the Wisconsin Badgers versus the six-ranked Stanford Cardinal from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Due to time constraints, we move ahead to further action. Watch ESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN Live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Tires that go the distance make Goodyear a fan favorite. Goodyear more driven. Herbie, good looking drive. Badges with a first and goal at the eight yard line. It's going to be interesting to see the play selection. I mean, Monte Ball is, is one of the best we've ever seen in being physical and being hungry, but Stanford's a tough defense down inside the 10 yard line to run the football on. A couple of tight ends and a fullback to help with the blocking, and here comes 28. Monte Ball touchdown. That was easy. And there's a penalty flag thrown back on the 10-yard line. Coming back. First down. And Rick Wagner, the left tackle, who was on the outside. This play went right up the middle. He's off to the left. He locks on with his man. Look at the far left, how he locks on to his man, grabs him, and then brings him down. That's what they saw. It's a good call. We quick call. We had two officials make that call quick. We have to teach this referee not to talk into the teeth of a crowd. No one can hear exactly who he's pointing out was guilty of holding. Now it's backed up. Here comes ball again. And he's back to about the 13-yard line. We talked about how impressive it was to see 
the boss Barry Alvarez and Matt Canada who's the offensive coordinator still calling the plays Barry telling us this morning that he's gonna allow Matt Canada to call the plays but there's Matt certain downs certain plays he's gonna kind of help guide him uh, and, and have uh, the overall say on what the play will be but right now Matt Canada in charge of calling these plays to try to get him in the end zone second down and goal for the 14 they keep it in balls hands the Badgers have not completed a pass and that was an obvious passing situation and Herbie as you pointed out it very difficult to stay on the ground in that situation and when you run on first and second down if you're going to take a shot with a pass typically you, you may want to do it on first or second down down here the penalty just set them back it killed them uh, Wagner didn't have to hold there that that's going to be a touchdown without that hold but now you try to throw get your first completion on third down it's going to be tough Aberderis is definitely their go to man here who's in the slot to the left Patterson the tight end is out also reaches for Jacob Patterson touchdown Wisconsin Everybody thinking maybe Aberderis, but Jacob Pedersen's had a pretty good career himself. What an effort, Brent, to extend. They might take a peek to see if his knee was down. Pretty good effort to extend to the end zone, but did his knee touch before he broke the plane? It appears so in that picture. It's like he's down maybe on the six-inch line. It looked like he might be short. And that was a third down. Yep. Correct. So fourth and goal. Stanford says number 28's coming on fourth and goal. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Would he be the heavy favorite right now? Yeah. Yeah. Great effort. Pet Pedersen in traffic makes the catch, and then just trying as hard as he can to reach, but but clearly his knee touched before he got into the end zone. That's a great, great look at it right here. Knees down, he's short. Sets up a really, really big fourth and goal here for this Wisconsin team. It's a 13 play drive. They've gone 74 yards in a little over eight minutes. That's a Wisconsin kind of drive. And Barry Alvarez, welcome back to coaching. Fourth down and goal. And he's got to not just make the decision, but help Matt Canada make the right call here to try to get the touchdown. Assuming, of course, that they're going to try to get the touchdown. We've seen Kurt Phillips the whole way so far, but Barry Alvarez and his staff giving you and I every indication that Joel Stavi at some point, the freshman, will eventually get into this football game. After further review, it was determined that the runner's knee was down prior to going in the end zone. The ball be placed at the half yard line on the left hash. Wisconsin getting their jumbo package ready but white is trotting onto the field all yep. right now James white and that gives them the option of running a wildcat here on fourth down sure and that's exactly what they're going to do they're going to line up number 20 offset the fullback extra tackle straight ahead didn't battling for it I don't think he got it I don't think he got the touchdown. I think big Ben Gardner got to him first. The young man from Wisconsin. Very, very predictable. Gardner shoots the gap, uses his quickness against the size 
of Wisconsin. Wisconsin came in with their heavy package. They brought in the jumbo look, all the big linemen. And again, speed wins the battle in the trenches. He gets lower and he penetrates that big offensive line and keeps White short of the end zone. So let's second guess Barry Alvarez for the first time. Welcome back, coach. But what was wrong with number 28? <laughs> Just kidding, Barry. I'm John Anderson. Time for Sports Center right now, presented by Discover Card. Fantastic Outback Bowl in Tampa. Backup quarterback Dylan Thompson hits Bruce Ellington. 32 yards for the touchdown with 11 seconds to go. Give South Carolina a win over Michigan 33 28. That's what's happening on Sports Center right now. So Stanford is backed up in the shadow of its own goal at the half yard line. Hogan under center, standing in the end zone. Hewitt, the fullback, is stopped. I do not believe that's a safety. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Southwood was pushing him back. And they'll spot it outside of the end zone. And it'll be second down here. Pretty good collision there with Southward coming up. And remember, Stanford had the football only twice. Seven plays, 80 yards, touchdown. Five plays, 79 yards, touchdown. 13 yards of play. It's a little bit of a different story for David Shaw. Backed up inside his own one-yard line. Badger defense attempting to attack here. Battling to get out, twisting to the six-yard line on second down. And a little daylight with Stephon Taylor. That was a good, tough run. Stanford had a couple big plays early in this game. First, a great catch by Jamal Rashad Patterson going up in the air. That eventually led to a touchdown. And then play action here on first and ten. They find Zach Ertz. Great job by Hogan throwing it downfield. Badgers will try to hold on third down. Penalty flag, and there's a false start. This is going to back them up half the distance. False start. Offense on the 65. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. Khalil Wilkes out of New Jersey, a junior. Great player at left guard that time, just anticipating the snap count. First time we've seen Stanford deal with a little adversity, and Kevin Hogan deal with some adversity. David Shaw saying the greatest, one of the greatest attributes of Kevin Hogan is his poise. Third down and eight. Badgers have forced a punt. Big Chris, well, I shouldn't say not so big, but Chris Borland is a tackling machine. Or... I, he is. And, and you're right about not saying he's he's real big, but he is a fierce competitor. 5'11", 242 pounds. He's right in the middle of this defense, and he's coming downhill in a hurry. He and Mike Taylor have got to be active, making a lot of tackles today against uh, Stephon Taylor. Let's see if the Badgers come after this one. The putter is standing near the back of the end zone. He gets it out. Abraderis feels it and is tackled immediately at midfield. The safety made a great play on that for Stanford. And that was Amana. Amana makes the stop. We'll be right back to the Rose Bowl game, presented by Vizio. Here at the Rose Bowl, Stanford leads Wisconsin by two touchdowns, 14-0. And as expected, Joel Stobby, Richard freshman from Greenfield, Wisconsin, number two, is checked in as the Badger quarterback. James White is his running back. Gordon on the jet sweep, gets a handoff. Trying to get the edge, looking for daylight, and he picks up a first down at the 34-yard line. Carrington may have saved the touchdown already. Sorry, Brent. Here's the view from our Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam, and this is a play that a lot of people remember in Indianapolis against the Nebraska defense, the jet sweep, and such great speed and such a great compliment to Monte Ball running into the interior. You get Gordon out to the outside. It really does a good job of getting this defense on the outside and challenging them that vertical speed and how quickly Gordon can hit it. Everett Terrace and Doe are over on the left. Play action now. 
Stoppy's going to go deep end zone. Everett Darris is open. And it couldn't hang on. Incomplete in the end zone. But I think Stoppy just showed you why the coaches wanted him on the field. He's got the bigger arm, but it's a double move here by Aberderis. He's known for this. A beautiful move by Terrence Brown. He gets by him. And I'll tell you what, the ball is thrown well enough to give him a shot here and be able to make this play. It's actually Barry Browning there in coverage. Really well thrown ball. Shocking that Aberderis unable to hold on to the ball. Even more shocking, Kurt Phillips has returned to the game. <laughs> that was a pretty good throw. Second down and 10, and <laughs> Phillips is back as the quarterback with White as the running back. Jet sweep again. It's going to be Gordon this time. Card already. The defenders over on the right side did not give ground, and Lancaster made the stop for Stanford. What's great about the jet sweep for this offense is whether it hits a big one or not, it makes this defense have to play Wisconsin's running game honestly. And what you can do if you have it a few times you get to the outside, it can eventually get back to Monte Ball and James White between the tackles. So you bounce it to the outside, and then you keep him honest by going back to the inside. A little bit of a chess match between Matt Canada and what Derek Mason's doing on the other side. Phillips. Middle. Agadaris has got it. A deflection, I believe, that he caught. And that'll be a first down across the 15-yard line. Henry Anderson, 91, moves into the middle, coming all the way from the outside. That ball, I don't even think he got his hand on it, Brent. I either went off his shoulder pad or side of his helmet. The ball went right up into the air. And Aberdera shows you he's a sure-handed receiver that time. Great concentration to be able to hold on to this. But yeah, that went off the face mask of, of, of Henderson. And the ball that time bounces in favor of Wisconsin. Monte Ball checks back in. He is behind one. Monte steps to the right, dashes, reaches, touchdown. Uh, I think this one will stick. Beautiful jump cut. Bounces it to the outside. This guy just has a nose for the end zone. Reaches and extends and gets the six points for the Badger. The all-time career touchdown leader. College football. And the new field goal kicker, Jack Russell, will attempt this extra point here for the Badgers. 14-7 with nine minutes remaining here in the first half. The defense set this up, Herbie, by forcing that punt. They had great field position. And this time, look who Barry did leave on. Number 28. Down seven, back in it. The Rose Bowl game is brought to you by Tostitos. Where there's Tostitos, there's a party. The new Discover It card. Finally, a credit card that's changing the game. Dr. Pepper and Diet Dr. Pepper, always one of a kind. And the redesigned Honda Civic, the best Civic yet. Vanessa Manjarez, the Rose Queen, the Royal Court. They rode the Macy's float, presenting the Royal Court in this morning's 124th Rose Parade. The parade older than this great game. And now, Kyle French will handle the kickoffs for the Badgers, and you can see why. Drilling it back and uh, coming out is Kelsey Young. And Young to the 23-yard line. Fine return by Kelsey, who scored one of the touchdowns. This is a big touchdown by Monte Ball, down 14. See the backside guard pulling around. There's another big block by the fullback here in Derek Watt. That's what set it up, but it's the vision right there. The jump cut by Ball, a big block right here by Wozniak, and even the receiver, Frederick, gets involved. Great block spot on the perimeter, opened it up for Ball, and with that vision, that's an easy touchdown for Wisconsin. Wonderful scene here in Pasadena. A lot of folks come out, see the floats before they head to the parade. They hang out outside. I was lucky enough to have the tickets are inside. Cardinal football now. Hogan. 
Hands back off, and this is Wilkerson, and Wilkerson busts out to the 42-yard line. Irby, uh, he was not healthy that night in Oregon, but when he is, he's a great backup to Taylor. Well, he looks like a bowl running through here. <laughs> it's a different look and a different feel, but how, how about how that play just opened up? The execution again by this offensive line. Let me recommend to any offensive line coaches that are out there, you, you want, might want to go and look at the Stanford film, not just from today, but the entire season, and use it as a clinic, or maybe come visit Mike, Mike Bloomgren and his Stanford offensive line, one of the best in the country. They're going to go to the Wildcat now with Wilkerson. Direct snap, a little bit of a counter step to the right. And he steps out at midfield on first down. Cromarty gets him out. I just, in this era of the spread, I, it, it's so refreshing. You and I have called a lot of Stanford games over the years. It's so refreshing to watch guys like this up front who kind of do it the old fashioned way. And it's not just the size of these guys, they're very, very athletic. They get to the second level, they execute very well. Just a great group across the board. And they recruited some freshmen that you're going to yes. be hearing from the next few years in there, too. Now Hogan back in from the gun. A wobble caught by Montgomery, and Montgomery is to the 35-yard line. That's his first catch, the first and down. And first and 10, and Cardinal moving again. And another job, another good job here by Stanford, trying to get these linebackers out in space. You get a matchup with Ty Montgomery as a receiver who's healthy now after the long layoff, getting ready for this bowl game up against Mike Taylor. And how about the way you see this quarterback, Kevin Hogan, sitting back in the pocket? Not just an athletic guy, he can run the pro stuff too. Sits in the pocket with time to throw, finds that matchup and puts it right on the money. Taylor back in, but they spread him out to the left and empty the backfield. Hogan, incomplete. Now the bounds here on the far side. Montgomery was waiting. But there was pressure coming that time from Mike Taylor, one of the fine linebackers. When they spread out Wisconsin's defense, the, the mismatch to me is going to be with the, the tight ends. Toilolo, number 11, is 6'8", and Zach Ertz is 6'6". And you've got safeties and linebackers who are anywhere from 5'11 to 6'2", trying to match up with them out in space. That's a very difficult thing for this defense to try to match up with. Stanford will continue to go back to that look quite a bit. That was Hogan's first miss after four completions. And he comes right back to the right-hand side that time, short of the 30-yard line was Ty Montgomery, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas, St. Mark's High School. He's been so impressed this year with Kevin Hogan. He started the year as the third guy. I mean, who wants to replace Andrew Luck? And Hogan was being a freshman, still learning the offense. They kind of had a, a different wrinkle as kind of a zone read look for him early. And then eventually, Josh Nunes lost a couple games. And late in the year, they gave him a chance to go out there and take over. And these last four games has just been sensational as the leader of this offense. Third down and five. Man to man. Now they bring Taylor back into the backfield and there was movement. Let's see if it was a false start timeout. here. Stay there was a timeout was called. Be a full timeout. So we'll take a break. Stanford, Wisconsin, 99th Rose Bowl game, and the Cardinal leads by seven. Tiger Woods, who attended Stanford. Several Stanford celebs are here. Condoleezza Rice, former Secretary of State, sitting in one of the boxes, and great Jim Plunkett, 1970 Heisman Trophy winner, down on the sideline as the Cardinal comes up now with a third down on this drive. Trying to throw for it, too high and incomplete. He had Ertz open, but they couldn't hook up. Yeah, they, they always want to try to find a way to get Ertz to football. They have Tololo and Ertz matched up together, trying to just 
affect the communication between the two defensive backs who are matched up out there. Again, Ertz at 6'6", Tololo at 6'8". That ball is thrown lower there by Hogan. It's a first down for the Cardinal. Jordan Williamson will attempt this 47-yard field goal. Here's the young man who missed a couple of huge field goals against Oklahoma State and came back and beat Oregon in Eugene this year. Coach stuck right with him and he curls this 47-yarder in. 17-7 now. Stanford leads Wisconsin. Sophomore receiver Marquise Lee from USC is a nominee for the AT&T All-America Player of the Year. A text of votes to 34763 from your mobile phone to vote. The winner will be announced during the Discover BCS National Championship January 7th. So the Badgers here in the Rose Bowl set to receive this kickoff. Hurry, that was good holding that. That drive down, potential touchdown, settling for it three. It was, especially after the first two drives, two touchdowns for Stanford. And they pin them back inside their own one-yard line. They get three and out to get the ball back to their own offense. And, and then that stopped to, to force the field goal. That is, that's good adjustments there by this uh, this defense from Wisconsin. Doe and White are back deep. This will be Doe coming out. He's down at the 15-yard line. Well, we want to remind everybody that the Discover Orange Bowl will be coming up next on ESPN. Cinderella, dressed up as Northern Illinois, will take on two-touchdown favorite Florida State. And Mr. Herbstreit, some of my friends in DeKalb have said that, uh, that you're... <laughs> what was it you said? I can't forget. I said, why are we even talking about this? Okay. <laughs> yeah, why, why should they even be? There's a bit different argument between why are we even putting them in this and can they compete in a game where Florida State's probably going to show up flat? I wouldn't be shocked to see him compete. Jordan Lynch, pretty good quarterback for the Huskies. And here is the, the handoff. And stopped at the 15-yard line. We take a look at what Monte Ball has yeah, done here. Yeah, maybe. he's been able to get out. He's got 70 yards on 13 carries in his first half. Remember, he's he's had over 100 yards in two Rose Bowls. Only four backs have ever done that in the history of this Rose Bowl, and he's already to 70 yards. He's been bottled up at times, and then he's hit a few big ones. So that, he's a big part of this offense, and between that and the jet sweep that we've seen coming around, that's probably been the best offense. We knew that coming in. That'd probably be the best offense for Wisconsin today. Phillips stays in at quarterback. Stavi in for one play on that long pass. Doe on the jet sweep and going nowhere. He is thrown for a loss at the 11-yard line. Jordan Richards, outstanding sophomore safety from Folsom, California, up with the stop. Derek Mason told his defense after watching Nebraska trying to stop the jet sweep, Derek Mason said, guys, it's pretty simple. On the jet sweep, they're going to fake the interior run to one side and bring the jet sweep around to the other. Our perimeter guys, our safeties and corners have got to stop the jet sweep and allow the interior people to stop the inside run game. That time, great job in run support by eight Jordan Richards. Third down and 11. Phillips starts Doe. Drops off the screen on the other side. That's the ball and well short of the first down. Badgers are forced to punt. Shane Scove, one of quite a few linebackers for Stanford who are going to wind up playing in the National Football League. Number 11 is a big time player and so is number 44, Chase Thomas. And that was a huge play because there was a convoy out there. But somehow Scove's able to get off of Travis Frederick there on a play that was set up on third down with that screen. He shed that block and, and kept ball short of the first down. Great play by Shane Scove. Drew Meyer back to punt. Fair catch at the 32 yard line. Well, Herbie, this is the uh, the start of the BCS. Four games to go. We talked about the Orange Bowl. We've mentioned the one on Thursday, but how about that one week from Monday? Wh who's meeting down there in Miami in the wow. championship game? You, you and I have been so locked into this one. We'll, we'll turn the page tonight and get ready for Notre Dame and Alabama. And 
Now, th this is what uh, the postseason is all about. We've had a lot of fun with a lot of these bowl games today and really the, the last uh, week or so. But finally, after tonight, we, we've got a couple more to look at and then the big one next Monday, which just can't wait to talk about and get into. Yeah, it's going to be a great game between Notre Dame and Alabama. Hogan, play action, thrown downfield, and that might be interference, and it is. There was no question about that one as the flags came a flying and Cromarty guilty. Pass interference. Defense on the 14. Automatic. Push down. And Marcus Cromarty is pretty well known. He didn't have a great bowl game last year against Oregon. Came into this game very determined to play well, coming off a great Big Ten championship game. What else do you want him to do? I mean, it's like playing basketball and trying to out-rebound a guy who's 6'8 when you're 6'1. Ball's thrown up in the air by Hogan, which is smart to give his taller receiver a chance. And Cromarty did everything there, just holding on for dear life. It's obviously interference. Here's Hogan, going to throw the swing pass to Wilkerson. And Wilkerson out of bounds short of the 50-yard line. Kevin Hogan knows that, that if there's a mismatch in this game, when they, when they want to create balance, it's, again, the tight ends. We're going to talk about it throughout the whole game. When you have Zach Ertz, who is arguably the top tight end in the country, who can run and win in one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Toilolo at 6'8", you've got to continue to find ways when you're going to throw the ball to find the matchup, to throw the ball up in the air and give Ertz and Toilolo a chance to make a play. Taylor back in is the Cardinal running back. Hogan. He's been throwing just a little bit high. Yep. And he, as soon as he threw that football, he knew that, that the ball was going to sail on him. He's just a little bit out of rhythm here. I mean, in the first part of this game, they seem to have everything going. And David Shaw came in along with Pep Hamilton with a great plan. Things were working. The running game, the passing game, they've been very balanced throughout. Right now, 23 plays in, 13 runs, and, and only 10 passes. You know, he is... You know, he's a, he's a quarterback that gets streaky like anybody right now. We'll, we'll see if he gets a chance here on third down to make a play. Hogan under pressure. Steps away from it. He's going to take off. And Hogan is short of the first down. The Cardinal will punt it away. Chris Borland with the first down saving tackle. It's good for Wisconsin that they got pressure because Zach Ertz is lined up almost as a receiver to the outside. Watch him to the left, work to the middle, and eventually open up away from Chris Borland. But the pressure got home. Here's Ertz working, flexed out as a receiver. And even though Borland looks like he's there, the ball is thrown to the middle there. If he had time, it would have been a first down. But good pressure that time by Chris Ash dialing it up and getting home there and keeping Hogan short of the first down. Zaklinski. Back to punt for Stanford and Aberderis is deep for the Badgers. Signals for the fair catch. Makes the catch at the 15 yard line. Well, we have not mentioned yet the All State Sugar Bowl, Herbie, and that'll be Wednesday night. And the Gators are back at a BCS Bowl, and uh, they will be taking on the champions of the Big East Conference, number 21. Louisville and Louisville could cause them all kinds of trouble if Terry Bridgewater's healthy. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater is a guy that that has tremendous athletic ability. He's healthy now, gives him a chance. And Charlie Strong, former Gator defensive coordinator, has done such a remarkable job there at Louisville. It'll be fun to see that matchup uh, tomorrow in the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Ball back in as the tailback. Wisconsin has all three timeouts and 2:23 here to go. Ball again. Boy, it is tough for the first man to bring him down as he makes his way to the 20 yard line. I found it hard to believe when Ball decided to come back to school that the NFL had said he projected no better than a third round draft choice. When you watch him, he gets tough inside yards, and to me, that's the mark of somebody who can play in the National Football League. Well, he's a guy that can stay on the field. First, second, and third down. He's good in pass protection. He can catch the football, obviously can run to the outside and run to the inside. He is very physical runner. Would surprise you with his size and dimensions. Look at him find his daylight off his lead blocker and muscle ahead for a first down out to the 29-yard line. Another thing about the young man, he's got great attitude. Mom and dad are around. You know, he's had great upbringing. 
Uh, I don't think you can go wrong picking him. No, 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 no. And, and, and in fact, he was known early in his career, more known for his power than his quickness. He's kind of grown in to being more of a big play back. Now Phillips. See if he can loosen it up. Abraderis out of bounds at the 40, and that's a first down throw. And a good job of concentrating again by Jared Abraderis. Chase Thomas, who's a great pass rusher, this time sits back in coverage. I think he may have surprised this time Phillips. He actually gets a hand on the football, and Abraderis focuses there and is able to hold on and catch the football for the first down. Starting to think about maybe a field goal here. It's still all three timeouts, and remember, they get the ball to start the second half. This is a big drive for Wisconsin. Phillips will take off. Down the sideline, breaks free. Across the 25-yard line and out of bounds at the 22 with Richards making the stop. And that's, that's a 38-yard run. And I love that he didn't give up on this play. Watch Jared Aberderis pick up a block here. It looks like he's going to run out of bounds. Look at that seal block. He actually picks up two defenders, Alex Carter and Ed Reynolds with that block. He stays in bounds. A great run there by Phillips. 1.15 to go. And White stopped on first down. Barry calls a timeout right away. Remember, we've only seen Joel Stavi come in and he threw that one pass down the sideline into the end zone to Aberderis. It was dropped. They don't have the most confidence in their field goal kicking situation. You know, you Kyle, know, I was going to say Kyle French, who struggled late in the year, is, is out of the mix today. Jack Russell is in. You know, you talked about the uh, quarterback, Serbia. Let me take everybody back because Danny O'Brien, he, of course, of the transfer from Maryland, he opened up under center. Then they went to the freshman for six games, and he was injured in that overtime loss to Michigan State. So Kurt Phillips came in for the last five games and led them to that big win over Nebraska and they've stuck with Phillips pretty much except for that one pass here. Highly touted, highly touted recruit coming out of Tennessee but had three reconstructive surgeries on the same knee. That's why he worked himself down the depth chart but these players on this team love Kurt Phillips and they want to play for him. He's got a second down and ten. Got a minute six to work with here. Coming in underneath with a nice pass. And White is out of bounds at about the 15. Coming up on the Buick halftime report, Chris Lee and Desmond break down the first half, and we will hear from both marching bands. Again, two timeouts left. About a minute, what is a minute or one here to go in the first half. Cannot emphasize it enough. Stanford won the toss, elected to receive the ball, went right down and scored, meaning Wisconsin and Barry Alvarez will get the ball in the second half. Barry would dearly love to have a touchdown and not put it on the foot of his kicker right now. That's been a little bit of an issue, as Herbie mentioned, in the field goal department. So the Badgers will see if they can strike to the end zone. Phillips, good time, and got it off between two defenders to the seven-yard line. Man, what a throw that was to Sam Arneson, a sophomore from Merrill, Wisconsin. Remember they say never throw late over the middle? How in the world did A.J. Tarpley not intercept that football? Went right through his hands. How about the focus by the sophomore Sam Arneson to somehow catch that football? Wow. Phillips catches a break, and Arneson, another great job at receiver from Wisconsin, focusing on the football and securing the catch. So 54 seconds here now, Herbie. First down and goal. Badgers have the timeout in their pocket still to use. They would like not to have to attempt a field goal, but they're in that range where it's almost like an extra point right now. Absolutely, and you know, they're very confident in Monte Ball's putting the ball in his hands. Remember early when they got inside the 10-yard line, he put the ball in the hands of the jumbo package. Direct snap to James White did not work. This this time in this sequence of plays, you got to believe it's going to be Phillips and giving Ball a chance and maybe taking a shot. They still have time. Even though it's 54 seconds and one timeout, they still have plenty of time here to work with. Yeah, Watt is the fullback ahead of Ball. And here comes Monte, steps out left, cuts back to daylight to the five-yard line. You know, we've talked about Phillips when he came back in the game. Little Rascals completed six in a row. One off the face mask, but nice <laughs> and they come quickly now. 
Monte behind the center. And he is up to about the four yard line. 28 seconds, third down and goal. We're going to call the timeout here. Barry Alvarez, you know, they're. they're Barry Alvarez is an outstanding coach and still is an outstanding coach. He's a Hall of Famer here at the Rose Bowl. But, but, Brett, you don't get a walkthrough. You know, you, you, you go from sitting in the athletic director's office to coming down here and all of a sudden walking through some situations in your mind, and then all of a sudden you're out here and you've got to be able to react quickly and call the timeouts. At the, by using that timeout, you've got to put the ball up into the end zone now. Yeah, but the only chance is to throw it into the end zone if you want to think about field goal because you don't have a timeout left here. But on the other hand, do you pass up number 28 in this or do you say, okay, we can run two plays if we move? Well, because of the execution and the field goal kicking department for Wisconsin, I don't know if I want to hurry up my backup kicker to have his first Rose Bowl attempt of field goal. I, I think you got to take a shot, throw the ball up to Aberderis, or maybe find a tight end, Jacob Pedersen. See if you can make it, throw the touchdown pass, take a chance to get the touchdown. If not, at the very least, you need time to very leisurely be able to go out and a kick a, a field goal attempt by Jack Russell. Three receivers to the left. Aberderis goes to the right. Monte Ball. They motion Doe, and they'll send him back out to the left. They roll the protection in that side. Fire caught. Touchdown. That was caught by Jordan Frederick, redshirt freshman from Madison's Memorial High School. Love. Phillips rallies this team. He did a great job. What's the one thing you can't take there, Brent, on third down without a timeout? Set the sack. This way they take the pressure off of the offensive line in Phillips against the team that leads the nation in sacks with 56. They roll him away from it, put the ball low and away so Frederick can make a play on it. They get the touchdown. Going to make sure he secured this. Take another peek just to make sure he was able to hold on and secure the football. But if it holds up, 10 plays, 85 yards in two minutes and four seconds. It was interesting, the picture we had on the sideline yeah. before this play. Barry Alvarez was hands-on with his quarterback, explaining to him exactly what he had to have done. The mark of a veteran coach down there, and he was telling him, no doubt, what you were just saying, do not take a sack. Absolutely. Got to go in the end zone with this one. Can't get tackled short of it. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And that is Frederick's first career touchdown. And it could not have come at a more opportune time for the Badgers. Clearly held on to the ball. And it's a pretty big memory for him for his first career touchdown. Again, Wisconsin gets the ball to start the second half. And I'll tell you what, Brent. Having Kirk Phillips as a fifth-year senior, everything that he's been through really pays off in a situation like that. There's the young man from Madison. Russell, freshman in as a kicker, makes it a three-point game again. Go back to the catch by Sam Arneson. It was a gutsy throw and maybe one that Phillips got away with. Went right through A.J. Tarkley's hands right there. He's thinking about an interception. Somehow it went through his hands. Arneson holds on for the completion and a first down. And then here on third down, they roll away from the pressure. Jordan Frederick, the freshman from Madison, able to hold on for the touchdown. And Wisconsin feeling a lot better for Barry Alvarez. Only down three now as we get close to the half. Good job of coaching by the Badgers hanging in this game. Down two touchdowns quickly on Stanford's first two drives, in case you weren't with us. And uh, they steadied the ship a little bit. And then uh, the defense has done a couple of interesting things. They forced a punt out of the end zone to give them good field position, which set up a touchdown. Then they held a drive to a field goal down here. So the defense has come up with a couple of big moments for the Badgers here. This will go out of the end zone with 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Go back to those wristbands that Barry Alvarez has talked about in their preparation, just as a reminder, the all-in wristbands that they pulled out in 2003 to get ready to play number one Ohio State when Lee Evans caught a touchdown late. It's I'm in and I'm on.
And right now, that's never been more evident than this first half for Wisconsin after getting down by 14. Devin Kajust, one of the wide receivers. Let's see what David Shaw wants to do. A very tight formation. And this is Taylor running to the left, and they're simply going to take this three-point lead, it appears, into the locker room southward. Takes the headset off, and when he does that, and that means we're going to let the time run out and regroup. Great first half. I oh, know we got a Rose Bowl. Oh, we got a ball game coming up. You know, a lot of people uh, weren't too excited about a five loss Badger team here, but as I pointed Still out, falls. three of those five losses in overtime, the other two by three points. Let's go down to Tom Rinaldi with Coach Alvarez. Barry, welcome back to the Rose Bowl. Two possessions for Stanford. You're down two touchdowns. What was the turning point to get back in this game? Well, our kids never left, lost confidence. Uh, they're fighters. Uh, we were able to get some, some momentum, started running the ball. Uh, I, I, we have good communication, and uh, uh, I think our guys got, you know, our, our guys, there's a lot of, there was just a lot of game left, so we were fine. Good luck and enjoy the second half. Thank I appreciate you. it. Let's go over to Heather. Tom, thanks so much. Coach, after a quick start, what's your assessment of Kevin Hogan and your offense as this, as this game's progressed? You know, we've done well, but uh, tiny errors are getting us. You know, we missed a couple of throws high. Uh, we missed a couple of blocks on third down, which is inexcusable for us. We have to execute if we want to have a chance to win. We'll let you get to the locker room. Thanks, Coach. Brent, back to you. Thanks, Heather. Halftime at the 99th Rose Bowl. Stanford 17, Wisconsin 14. Stay tuned now for the Buick Halftime Show. Welcome to the Buick Halftime Report. Eighty five yard drive pulls Wisconsin within three of Stanford on halftime. We'll have analysis and highlights coming up. But now the Stanford Cardinal marching band led by drum major Aaron Acosta. Fit quite like them. The Stanford band, we wonder would they be naughty behaving themselves so far. <laughs> Chris Fettel, Lee Corso, and Desmond Howard. So the Badgers are yeah. down 10, about two and a half to play in the first half of their own 15 yard line. And then Kurt Phillips passes and runs them down the field for a huge drive. That really surprised me because we didn't see that from him during the regular season. And when I was standing on Wisconsin's sideline, they said, Desmond, that's what he does well. He can run the ball. People don't even understand that. He's not really a good passer, but he can run the ball. I expect to see him run the ball more in the second half to put a lot of pressure on that Stanford Cardinal. 
Cardinal defense. I was really surprised when Stanford's offense came out. They came out on fire using different packages, different formations, different personnel. And then it seemed like Wisconsin drew a bead on them defensively yeah. and kind of slowed down that Stanford Cardinal offense. Well, when the Wisconsin got behind, a lesser team would have folded. That's true. And they, had, and they came back. Now, Phillips is a great quarterback. The more he played, the better he got in this game. I know I noticed one thing in the last drive. Alvarez called both timeouts. Alvarez went over and talked to the quarterback before the last play and a touchdown pass. He had a controlling interest in that play. One thing I want to ask Coach Alvarez, who called the play when you had fourth and goal <laughs> and you took Monte Ball out yep. and direct snapped the ball to James White? Are you kidding me? Didn't, didn't Ball set an all-time record? I think he has the most touchdowns, <laughs> touchdowns right? Ever, ever. He's on the sideline on that play? This could be 21-17. Yeah, Nevertheless, be. Wisconsin back within three. They have more than 150 yards rushing. Stanford only allowed that three times all season long, and the Badgers will get the ball to begin the second half. When we come back, some highlights. Here's a highlight for Sanford. Twice long passes set up short touchdown runs. This one by Kelsey Young. Cardinal up by three at the break. You're watching the Buick Halftime Report. This Halftime Report is presented by the new Buick Enclave. It's smart made beautiful. An 11-yard dash from Monte Ball, extending his own career record for touchdown scored 83 now in his career. Huge moment at the end of the first half. Wisconsin back within three. A more conventional approach to the marching band taken by Wisconsin. I'm the director of Professor Michael LeCrone.
Brent Musburger with Kirk Herbstreit welcoming you back to the second half of the 99th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio and Herbie. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. Well, after Stanford jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead, Wisconsin had a chance. Monte Ball and the Badgers moved all the way down inside the five yard line. Only problem, Monte Ball was not on the field. They went with their jumbo package on fourth down and goal. Gave it to James White. Ben Gardner, who hails from Wisconsin, makes a huge play shooting the gap and didn't allow the Badgers to score. Now, here's the adjustment. Late in the first half, third down, they're out of timeouts. Instead of running the ball, they roll away from the pressure, and it's a good job there by the quarterback, Phillips, finding Frederick for his first career touchdown. So a nice job there by Matt Canada, realizing that, hey, it's a little bit tough sledding in the interior, this Stanford defense. Good job of rolling away from that pressure, but a great first half. And uh, to start the second half, the Badgers will have the ball, and I agree with Coach Corso. Steady down at 28, coming your way. Well, I think they've settled in. I, you know, I think Barry Alvarez and Matt Canada deserve a lot of credit. You even mentioned down by 14. They didn't panic. They didn't throw away their, the playbook and say, hey, let's start over. Barry Alvarez says, hey, we've been Wisconsin for a long time, even down 14. Long way to go. He mentioned that walking off the field. And uh, you know, I, I think that you're going to see more of the same here in the second half. It's going to come down to that final possession by either team. Lights are on. Sun setting. Take it down in the end zone by Melvin Gordon. He'll take a knee and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Let's check in now with Tom Rinaldi, Tom. Well, coming into this game, Barry Alvarez, Brent, said he fully expected to use two quarterbacks, Kurt Phillip and Joel Stavi, in this football game. We've only seen Stavi throw one pass, a deep ball to Abbott Harris, which was dropped in the end zone. It fits a situational approach. Alvarez said he'll use Stavi for those throws which best suit his arm strength. That was the play in the first half in which he used it. Would have been a touchdown if Albert Harris was able to haul it in. We'll see how he manages the two quarterbacks here in the second half, Brent. All right, Tom, and uh, Phillips will open up under center. Monte Ball, his running back. A couple of the big tight ends move over to the right. Now he has three in total, and they'll run ball on first down. And nothing doing on first and ten as we go down to Heather Cox. Brent, we talked all week with David Shaw. Every time he said his biggest concern was containing Monte Ball. Well, that hasn't changed. Coming out of the locker room, he said he told his defense that the first guy to him must bring him down. They've got to get into the backfield, stop him at the line of scrimmage. He said our goal in the second half, no yards after contact. And Kark, as you said, Shaw also said we prepared all month with the expectation that this game will come down to the fourth quarter. We're ready for it. Second down and 10. Phillips on a quick drop to the pass is deflected, incomplete, and it will be third and ten. And guess who? Ben Gardner. What a game the young man from Wisconsin is having. He, he said he grew up a huge Ron Dane fan, always dreamed of playing for the Badgers, didn't have a scholarship offer not only from Wisconsin, but really from anybody else. He was looking at Northern Iowa, when lo and behold, ball guys, Jack Harbaugh, got an opportunity to see him play. and called out to Jim Harbaugh and said you got to look at this kid Ben Gardner from out here in Wisconsin they gave him a full scholarship to go out and play at Stanford and he's had a heck of a career whites in the backfield he helps out on pass protection and he drops the ball he was slipping out on a screen pass it's the second time we've seen a third down screen which is not a shock from a, a very average passing team I mean it's and it's set up pretty well here Phillips does just the right thing here. He looks right, buys enough time, puts it right where, where, where White can make a play on it. I think White just got so excited to get downfield, he didn't secure the football first. Terrell lets it bounce, and it takes a badger bounce. But Wisconsin unable to take advantage of the first possession of the second half here. And now it will be Stanford's turn when you come back, leading by three in the 99th Rose Bowl game. As we take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate, this first catch by Jamal Rashad Patterson. He was coached in high school in Georgia by Mike Rozier. Mike Rozier had to love that effort. What an, what an amazing catch and concentration by Patterson. And then here on the other side, it's like Tarpley has an interception himself for Stanford. And 
was right through his hands, right into the tight end Sam Artisan's hands, able to secure that football. Rozier, of course, won a Heisman Trophy as a running back for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, playing for Tom Osborne. Reaching for the long handoff to Taylor, spins away, and then he is driven back by Borland, number 44. Linebackers are flowing downhill in a hurry. Yet Borland there, Taylor's involved, and even Shelton Johnson, number 24, the safety, just flying downhill in a hurry. And when you get, when you look at these linebackers, I mean, before the play even has a chance to develop, they're they're already going towards the line of scrimmage before he even gets the ball into his hands, which of course means Pep Hamilton sees that, and eventually you've got to be able to make him pay for that aggression by throwing the play action pass. Andrus Pete. The highly touted freshman tackle is at left tackle for Stanford as we open the second half. Hogan goes down. So they have one of the freshmen who've been so ballyhooed in. David Gilbert makes the stop for the Badgers on that. Andrus Pete, by the way, who's now going off to the sideline. He is out of Chandler, Arizona. Now Montgomery, who's finally healthy, splits out to the right side of this formation for Hogan. And it was movement all over the place. This will cost him five yards. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty, third down. That's Cameron Fleming, the right tackle. And he's a redshirt sophomore out of Houston, Texas. This might be the first time since Kevin Hogan's been the quarterback. I've, I've seen this offense a bit out of sync. You can see the creep from Wisconsin. They don't have anybody down. They're all just kind of walking around trying to affect that pass protection. Now it is third down and 15 for Hogan. Has time. Almost intercepted. Through to Terrell, and he was covered by Devin Smith, the fifth-year senior out of Coppell, Texas. He's actually open here. He finds a soft spot in the zone. This is a poor throw by Kevin Hogan. He cuts to the inside. He finds an opening there, right there. He just sits right there. The ball is actually thrown further to the outside, away from the bubble in that zone. Poorly thrown ball and poor read that time by Kevin Hogan. Abraderis awaits the punt for Wisconsin. Fields it at the 35 and tries to cut up field. Shook off the first tackler and makes it to the 44-yard line. So we start the second half and both Wisconsin and Stanford go three and out. Badgers turn when you come back. The Rose Bowl game is brought to you by Nissan. Tweet hashtag Nissan Heisman House for a chance to appear in next year's Heisman House. Allstate. Allstate is a proud sponsor of the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? And Coca-Cola Zero. Real Coke taste and zero calories. A national historic landmark. The Rose Bowl Stadium was built in 1922. And... Uh, ESPN broadcast family has been associated with this great game for 25 years. First down and 10 for the Badgers. Phillips remains the quarterback. Monte Ball. And Ball picks his way behind the middle of that line. Travis Frederick and Kyle Costigan. Monte Ball, obviously a big part of what Wisconsin needs to do, but... We've seen Kirk Phillips and this offense have some diversity, just enough to be able to make the Stanford defense respect, whether it's the jet sweep coming around or we saw a big scramble from him early. Just enough of passing. He's 7 of 10 of 68 yards with a one touchdown. You have to have a few wrinkles there to prevent Stanford from loading up on the running game. On second down and nine, White out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but they use Gordon on that jet sweep. He is cut off. And the Cardinal have been ready for that play since the first quarter. Well, that's the tenth time that we've seen Wisconsin run some form of a man in motion, you know, a jet sweep where they try to give him the ball. It was such a successful play against Nebraska in the Big 12 championship. And Stanford's had a lot of time to prepare for it. It hasn't necessarily been successful. My point is, I like the fact that they're just, just running it. 
Uh, it's misdirection. It's like a counter. It's enough to make the defense have to be aware of it. And by running it 10 times, it makes them be aware of it. It can open up the running lanes for Monte Ball. It's a third down and five, and I think there's a timeout. Yeah, full timeout. So the Badgers burn their first time out here prior to this third and five. So we'll take a break. They'll be right back. What a big third and five here, Herbie, for the Badgers. What do you think they might dial up? Well, you know, we've seen some success by trying to isolate Averderis. A lot of times they'll put him by himself to the top and three receivers to the other side. See if they can try to get him the ball. Jacob Pedersen, also 48, is a talented receiver in third downs. They're going to bring Averderis in motion this time, which Herbie's a little bit of a change. He has camped out to the left. Phillips rolls, comes in underneath. And that is well short of the first down. Terrence Brown and Scove make the play. And they brought both of their linebackers. Here's a view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam. There's Scove and then there's Tarpley. Obviously, Scove is able to get free. And because this passing game, passing game isn't very sophisticated, they don't have much of a threat vertically downfield. Stanford had all of their defense underneath and easily made that play well short of the first down. Terrell is back on this punt, and neither team has been able to move the football. Fair catch at the 15-yard line here. Well, the Discover Orange Bowl next up on ESPN. Mac Champion, number 15, Northern Illinois, looks to make a statement with that high-powered offense. And they'll face ACC champion number 12, Florida State. And there you see Jordan Lynch, 364 total yards in a game third most in the FBS and up against a very athletic Florida State team yeah one of the better dual threat quarterbacks in the country and Jordan Lynch to me that game really will come down to whether or not Florida State is interested especially defensively in being in that game Kevin Hogan Taylor behind the left side and that was read beautifully and coming up is southward He's a junior from Sunrise, Florida. Made a fine stop that time for the Badgers. You know, right now, you look at what Taylor's done in this game. They've been able to bottle him up for the most part. 11 carries, only 46 yards. And again, I, I keep watching here on first and 10. As soon as the ball is snapped and those linebackers see the guard pulling around, they are immediately coming downhill along with both the safeties, Southward and Johnson, setting up. Again, I'm surprised Pep Hamilton's not trying to challenge him with the play action pass more. Ertz is flexed off the line. Hogan looks in his direction. Now he's under duress. Gets it off to save the sack. And Taylor dashes back and is still going. A lot of activity for about a one-yard gain. Hogan has gotten so much credit for keeping plays alive that you know, this, remember, he's a freshman. Sometimes it's okay to throw it away or just take off and get as many yards as you can. He, you know, here he catches a break by Taylor making something out of this, and it's a big razzle-dazzle. We're all excited, but he's very fortunate that that wasn't more of a seven- or eight-yard loss because he's trying to always make a play, which you appreciate, but at some point, you got to be willing to understand when to throw that football away. Need six on this third down. And we still don't have a first down here in the second half. Southward again making a play. We, we've got to give Chris Ash and Charlie Partridge a lot of credit for this plan that they've been able to put together. You know, Stanford scored 14 points early, but they've made some adjustments, and the adjustments are pressure. I think they've settled in. They're starting to understand this scheme a little bit better, and quite honestly, I don't think Stanford's very aggressive right now with their play calling, making it a little easier for Wisconsin, Wisconsin to stop the Stanford offense. He's a Klinsky. Abraderis awaits for Wisconsin at the 33-yard line, and that's where the Badgers will have it. So defenses on both sides of the ball now have taken charge of this football game. We can't even get a, a first down here in the uh, second half. I, it, it reminds me a little bit here as we get ready for the second half, a little bit of just kind of feeling out one another. The defenses have made some adjustments. 
who's going to be who's willing to be more aggressive offensively because if you backfire and you throw an interception the way we almost saw Hogan doing the last possession then all of a sudden you're, you're putting your own defense in a really tough position so somebody's got to get aggressive if they want to be able to move the football against these two defenses play action Demonte ball got time couldn't find an open man and so Phillips will take off and he'll run for a first down to the 45-yard line. That's what I'm talking about. Be aggressive. Don't be afraid on first and 10 to take a chance here. Break a tendency. Everybody knows how tough you are running with Monte Ball. And on the other side with Taylor, here first and 10, a little bit of play action. Great coverage downfield. And Phillips, who's, again, three reconstructive surgeries to his right knee, hobbles across that first down marker to be able to pick up a first down for Wisconsin. Now James White checks back in as the running back for the Badgers. Gordon comes in motion on the sweep. Give to White. They are trying to spring White through a hole, and he's got that breakaway ability, but they can't quite get past the linebackers to get him into open space. Well, the whole key, Brent, is being able to get your guards up to the second level. The linebackers, Shane Scove and A.J. Tarpley, are so active when it comes to defending the run that if your guards aren't quick enough to get up to them, it makes it tough, whether it's ball or white. But you're right. White's a nice complement to the power of ball with the elusiveness and the vision and quickness that he brings to the table. Second down and seven. This is White in motion. Play action again to Monte Ball. Phillips hit on the reach. Got a man wide open. Chase Hammond. And he is shaken up as Richards unloads but Hammond was wide open on that far side and running free well he took his time to develop the play he had a fake up the middle he had a fake on the reverse it took a little bit of time for his receiver Hammond to get downfield and because he took so much time it gave Jordan Richards enough time to adjust to the football and lay him out I mean, Hammond's right there. I think he's maybe peeking downfield at Richards. Obviously, he's got to be able to make that catch for a first down. But to me, this is a play that if it would have been thrown a little bit earlier, it would have been a little bit easier for Hammond not to have those alligator arms and get a little concerned about Richards closing in on him. Now, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about hits and whether they're legal or not. And this was a very punishing hit. But Terry McCauley, the outstanding NFL referee for a long time up here in the booth, he says that that was a legal and that was a great example of a hit that's Perfect. hard, football, but clean, and a real good hit by the Stanford safety. We welcome you back to the 99th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. 17-14, 6.43 to go in the third. And a jarring hit with Chase Hammond. Now over on the sideline, a young man from Youngstown, Ohio. And here comes your third down for the Badgers. Monte Ball is the running back. Aberderis is on the right side of the formation. He comes through it. Phillips. Deflected incomplete. Badgers forced to punt. And that was Henry Anderson again. Anderson is so long and active up front at 6'6", 280 pounds. But I think the quarterback this time, he just telegraphs his throw and stares down his intended receiver. But pretty good athletic ability by Anderson. Remember, 6'6", he went up once. He comes down. He went straight back up with another vertical to knock that ball down. Stanford might have been offside. Booming punt. Terrell fields it at the eight-yard line, and he's down right away. Stanford, and they ran into the kicker also. Rough, roughing the kicker. That's 15 yards. Run right into the kicker. Defense on the 15. Five-yard pass. Oh, well, he looked pretty physical to me. Surprise! Oh, man, running ran into it. Now that's a fourth and 17, so this will not yeah. be 
a first down on the five yard penalty. That That's a bad, like bad call. That looks like you have got to, to protect the punter in that situation. Thank you very much, Mr. McCauley. You would have made that call and protected the punter. I, I, I thought it was roughing. I mean, it, you see a guy go into a, a punter like that. That's Shane Scove, the middle linebacker. Or, I'm sorry, the safety that time, actually, who got in there. A man him, but uh, they'll, they'll take the punt. Put him inside the 10 yard line. Kirby, the, the, the whole idea of that is when you get a defenseless punter with the leg up in the air, you can break a leg or something when you run into him in that fashion. That's why they call roughing and not running into him. Now, sometimes you, a player will get pushed into him. Yeah. This player just came right into him. Yeah. Good call by you early, Lad. Yeah, I thought, it, I, thought, I thought it was 15 and an automatic first down. It was a 43 yard punt to the nine yard line. And that's for Kevin Hogan. And the lads will be trying to come out here. Defense has taken over the 99th Rose Bowl game. Play action. Hogan on first down. Good runner. Steps for the first down across the 20 yard line to the 24. Mike Taylor finally getting him out of bounds. I talked about getting aggressive with the play calling by Pep Hamilton. You're going to pull around. You watch these linebackers. When you show tendencies to run the play action game, your linebackers start to cheat up. You've got to do something to be able to make them pay for that. Look at the linebackers cheating down. First and 10, bootleg. They're coming up to be able to stop Taylor. They've been doing that the last three series. This time they get aggressive and try to make them pay for it. They get the ball out on the perimeter with Hogan running. And that is Stanford's first first down of this half. And they come back to Taylor. It has been hard going against his defensive front for Stefan Taylor. Kirby, what, uh, has he even got 50 yards yet in this game? Where does he stand? No, right, right now he's just about at 50. He's at 49 yards. And I, I think if, if you watch the way Wisconsin's defending, it's almost as if they've said, you know what, if they beat us, they're going to beat us with Hogan. They're going to beat us with the passing game. We're not going to let Stephon Taylor beat us with his running game because they are clearly overcommitting against Stanford's run game at this point. Second down and seven. Kelsey Young has slipped into the backfield. Hewitt was the target. Incomplete. The fullback. Well, that is great recognition by the big fellas, really the entire defense. This is what three and a half weeks of preparation can do for you with film study. Not only the pressure, but look at the defense. Bo Allen is out there. The safety, Shelton Johnson's up tight. Taylor's there. Pro Marty. Wisconsin off the tip pass. Almost comes up with the interception. Third down and seven for Stanford. Taylor is back into the backfield. Look at that Badger defense. Only two down up front. Four creeping forward. Now they rush four. Hogan a bit befuddled. And he's taken down. There is a penalty flag on the play as he was reaching for the first down marker. But the referee threw a flag. Like maybe a hold there by Wilkes, the left guard. A lot of pressure. You, they're trying to disguise where the pressure's coming from. And at the last second, Borland and Armstrong dropped after showing blitz. Holding. Offense. Ten yard penalty. Third down. So in interesting that they took the penalty yeah, here. He was short I guess of the they first didn't down. want to gamble on fourth and yeah. one that he might go for it on. Yeah. At his own 30. Yeah. What the heck? You know, we should step you on give Taylor Hogan. and yeah. Hogan. Give Hogan another chance. They don't take that down. chance, so we backed him up 10 yards. Okay. Yeah, I think That's why he's right. the head coach today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get that bonus, yeah, right? We can jump on our guy. He does get a bonus. <laughs> and we'll show like everybody that, right? about that. That would have been fourth down. Third down and 17. Wilkerson is in as the back. Hogan has great time on this play. Couldn't find a receiver. He's not going to run for a first down in that situation. Borland again making the stop. You know, coach loved that play. The old head coach knew what he was doing. He's, he's sensing that this game is becoming a field position game. 
Bit of a gamble, but it pays off with that aggressive defense. Barry Alvarez kind of game. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, Herbie mentioned something, and right after this kick, we want to show it to you. Aberderis is back deep now again for the Badgers. And he makes the catch at about the 27-yard line. So, Herbie said there is a bonus, and indeed there is. This is athletic director salary in Madison, but for coaching in the Rose Bowl, 118,500. And if he can win this game. I was going to say, look at that bottom number. He's buying tonight if we go out, if he wins this no game. No doubt about <laughs> it. There's a lot oh, at stake for yeah, everybody. Deep. You know, he has been a heck of an athletic director. One of the things when you go into Madison for one of their basketball games, they've got a great hockey program, women's athlete, he's always around. I mean, oh, he yeah. just loves sports of all he kinds. He sure does. He's done a really good job. Obviously, in Madison as a head coach, an ambassador, athletic director. Monte Ball in behind what? And he's across the 30 yard line. Our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. You know, we would show you. Coach Shaw's bonus in this game, folks. But remember, Stanford is a private institution and a very good one at that. So they were able to keep those things under wraps a little bit better than the public schools. But <laughs> David Shaw in two years has done a fabulous job replacing Jim Harbaugh at Stanford. And there's Monte Ball. He down at about the 34-yard line of the third down coming up. You know, I asked Coach Shaw. You know, what, what, what do we have? About seven NFL coaches lose their jobs yesterday? So I said, your phone's going to start ringing. He said, nope. That's why my contract was extended by Stanford. Right. No distractions this week. Not going to be calling. Because i got to tell you right now, if I owned an NFL team, one of the college coaches that I would interview is right there. Coach, I spent nine years in the NFL as an assistant coach. Runs a power game. Don't chase him away. No, he, he's the NFL. He he, so we want to keep he's him not right going place. Believe me, he is very happy. Third down now, and Phillips fires complete. Got the first down out to the 45-yard line, and he finds Abradaris. There's Abradaris on the backside, one-on-one, -on -one, an opportunity to go up against a freshman, Alex Carter, who's had a really good year. Very physical. He sells it to the outside, comes back in on the quick, the quick slant. Once he got the leverage with his body to the inside, it made it very easy for Kurt Phillips to make that throw. That's something that Stanford has got to be aware of. When Abradaris gets on the backside by himself and he gets one-on-one, -on -one, he's typically going to win that matchup. Now the jet sweep with Gordon. Coming around right, got a great block. Across midfield, and Terrence Brown makes a stop. But at the point of attack, he finally got that block on the seal man. Well, they've been they've having a hard time getting to the outside, so Pedersen actually kicks him to the outside, and then he allows the, Gordon to cut underneath it. So instead of sealing it, he just pushes Richards outside, and that gives Gordon enough room there to be able to accelerate upfield. You give him just a little bit of room, and we've seen all year what Gordon can do for this offense. Second down in two. White stays in. Gordon in motion and hit in the backfield, anticipating the snap. Was that was Morrow? It was almost like he jumped across too early, but he just read it perfectly. Watch Morrow get off his stance. Boy, he, you know, he and Henry Anderson just do such a good job of being able to get inside in between these mm. gaps. I mean, he just, you're right, he probably guessed there a little bit. That was great anticipation. And I'll tell you, between he and Anderson, both 6'6", six, six, about 280 pounds, really good quickness. They've been disrupting that left side all game. Five-yard loss. Monte Ball checks in as a running back. Phillips steps away to the left. Tries to get the first down and will not get the first down. Could not get to the marker. And hanging on was freshman Alex Carter from Ashburn, Virginia. Briarwoods High School going to be an outstanding defensive back. That young man right there, number 25. What an effort there by Kurt Phillips just to try to come up with that first down. Barry's going to send the punt team out here. 
I'm sure that, you know, for just a second he flashed, but he knows what kind of game this is. This is a ball control, defensive struggle, play field position, sure. unless he's got a fake on. Here we go. Coming through with the punt. Hangs it high. And it will bounce out at about the 15-yard line. So Barry says, let's play this field position game. We're down only three. That's approaching kind of the fourth quarter. Absolutely. And it's also Stanford's kind of game. They've had some really close games this year. And they typically like to get into the fourth quarter, scratch and claw themselves. That's what makes this matchup so interesting. Not only are they both physical, good against good and all that it's also both teams want to get into the fourth quarter and have a chance and who's going to make a play to be able to win it some of our warriors phillips scove on the other side these youngsters have played their heart out first down and 10. hogan's back hewitt and taylor alongside going to throw the swing to taylor and Taylor is out to the 18-yard line on that first down pass with Armstrong making the stop on our last play of the third quarter. Time for Badger fans to jump around. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Kirk, there is our director, Derek Mobley's favorite shot every year of the Rose Bowl. The sun setting off to the west here in Pasadena now. There are the members, newest members of the Hall of Fame. The guy you're very familiar with, John Cooper from Ohio State. One of the great linemen of all time, Ron Yeri from USC. And Brian Greasy, who is the radio analyst for ESPN today, he and his dad, Bob, are both in the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. Now, John Cooper is the only coach to win with a Pac-12 team. They were the Pac-10 then, Arizona State, and then later with a Big Ten team, Ohio State. So Hogan keeps it and takes off. Good run to the 32-yard line. Uh, his mobility is always a factor. Here's the view from our Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam. A little play action here, and when he gets out on the edge, there's nobody open out there. Young was covered. The two receivers downfield are covered, and Hogan does what he does, and that's make something out of nothing. Able to use his athletic ability and maneuver his way through that Wisconsin defense and pick up a first down. And not only is that a first down. But when you have a quarterback that starts getting to the outside like that, that allows you to get back to your bed and bread and butter, which is Stephon Taylor. The ball at the 31-yard line on this first down. Hewitt offsets. Play action. Hogan's back, looking deep middle. Montgomery, and he overthrew him. Montgomery had broken free. There was double coverage back there, but Hogan overthrew him. I'm surprised we've not seen more of this from Stanford with Desmond southward to safety. Number 12, as much as he's cheating down, Shelton Johnson, another safety that's cheating down, there's one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside. And whether it's Patterson, in this case, Ty Montgomery, somebody on the outside is going to have to eventually try to make them pay for that. Otherwise, it's going to be tough sledding to try to move the ball with a quarterback scrambling and, and just running Taylor. Wilkerson replaces Taylor. Toss, cuts back the other way. Badgers not fooled for a big loss back to the 23 yard line. Bo Allen, one of the defensive linemen, big number 96, 335 pounder. That play seemed to take forever to develop and that's what you have with more of a powerful Wilkerson. That's a design play to come back like a counter. But I'll tell you what, for a, people like to knock the Big Ten for being big and powerful and physical, they don't have much speed. Tell you what, that Wisconsin defense looks like they're moving around pretty quickly to me. Stefan Taylor returns as the running back. Hogan can't find an open S to use the safety valve. Taylor and Taylor will go down shy of the 40-yard line 
And Stanford forced a punt. And that is great defense containing both Hogan as far as his ability to scramble and create and then chasing the football down because Taylor in the open field is dangerous. And even though he had a long way to go, once you see this quarterback start to take off, we've seen what he can do with his mobility. You can see how close Taylor came to that first down, but good gang tackle team pursuit there by that Badgers defense. Stanford punts it away for the sixth time. Abradaris from the 14-yard line. Down, and there's a penalty flag this time. Shelton Johnson may have had an illegal block there. There's no foul on the play for illegal block in the back. It's a side block. First down. I'm surprised they picked this one up. You can see it. 23 Harris watch Shelton Johnson <laughs> I don't know if it's the Olay attempt there with his arms out or what they let it slide so we welcome you back the land of the Green Bay Packers and the Cheeseheads eh? the Badgers with the football right now Phillips is the quarterback Coming out from their own 14-yard line, trailing Stanford by three points. Monte Ball moving to the left to the 15-yard line. We've talked about Barry Alvarez taking over for Brett Bielma, but I want you to notice, and Herbie, there are six other coaches moving on after this game, but all of them are working here today under Alvarez in this Rose Bowl. I don't Remarkable. We, I don't know if we've ever seen that in the Rose Bowl. It's such an accomplishment for his staff and for players to get to the granddaddy of them all. I've never seen this many coaches after they play in this game and coach in this game they take a shower. They're all getting on different planes to go to different schools. Here's Gordon on the jet sweep. Now Gary Anderson was hired as the head coach and he is on the sideline. This is a man who did a remarkable job at Utah State. Their first 11 win season almost beat the Badgers in Madison. They had a field goal to win it and couldn't convert. See a man who has worked at Utah and he's done a great job. He beat Alabama as one of the assistant coaches in a Sugar Bowl. This is a fine head coach and a great selection by Barry Alvarez. Yeah, Barry Alvarez lost a great one in Brett Bielma and found a great one in Gary Anderson. By the way, he used to work for Urban Meyer, obviously, while he was out in Utah. Mate Ball straight ahead. Hit right short of the first down marker. He is brought down by David Perry. And David Perry is a story. He had to replace Terrence Stevens and Terrence Stevens was suspended, the fine nose man for Stanford. How about the sophomore from Iowa? <laughs> he play, he has played all this game and a game against UCLA very well and we're having to replace Stevens. That time, third down and short, just use his quickness to be able to get around the polling lineman. Terrell is back deep. And the punting game continues here in the second half of this Rose Bowl. Late fair catch signal, and there is a penalty flag. There was contact as he was making the catch. I thought with the naked eye that it looked like the signal was a little late, but the officials disagreed, and they were much closer than I was. Head to the play. Personal foul on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty. Running into the receiver. Automatic. First down. Prince Shelton Johnson was downfield and covered. I think it was late here. That's probably what maybe caught Johnson by surprise. Oh, 15... he tried to get out of the way. Yeah, yeah, he is. But he did make contact. But the thing that's interesting here, Brent, is right. talk about a game of field position. 15 yards will cost you. Timeout. The Rose Bowl game is presented by the Vizio Fandemonium Fan Challenge. Learn more at Vizio.com slash Rose Bowl. The 2013 Chevrolet Silverado, working hard on and off the field. 
Taco Bell, sometimes you got to live Mars. And AT&T, official sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Welcome back to the Rose Bowl. And uh, Kirk, it's been a struggle for Stanford here lately. Uh, Wisconsin has cranked up the intensity. And we've seen Stanford also, I think, get a little bit more conservative in this second half. Taylor breaks a tackle. Good second effort run by the tailback. Close to a first down. Pro Marty makes the stop. Yeah, these first two drives, I mean, it looked like Stanford was going to score a lot of points, 14 points. But in the last eight drives, look at this. David Shaw trying to figure things out. As I said, I think it's a combination of Wisconsin getting more confident, getting more aggressive on defense with their linebackers and safeties against the run, containing uh, Kevin Hogan when he is thrown. And I think now we're going to find out who really wants to win this game more because both these offenses have been struggling quite a bit. Hewitt, the lead block. And that time the defense won, but Taylor picked up the first down. And uh, that's the first snap in Wisconsin territory since about midway through the first quarter by this team. Yeah, it, it, it's been, uh, I think, a bit of a surprise for Kevin Hogan. Like, you and I have seen him in these last four games. And always seems that Stanford is dictating things to the defense that they're going up against and that's not been the case after after those first two drives this is where they like to throw the ball to the tight ends once they empty the set and they emptied it by sending Taylor out they look back underneath and they did hit her it's good call Herbie that's for a first down well no they're gonna mark it a little bit short now and yeah, they spread them out because they want to try to get Torlolo up against Borland or Ertz up against Taylor. This time he can choose either side. He goes towards Ertz, who finds a nice little hole there between the safety or the corner that time, Smith, and also the linebacker. See the linebacker's eyes? He looked back into the quarterback. Ertz is able to get away from him. Nice, easy throw, and you see Hogan there back in rhythm. Young motions out of the backfield. Troy Lolo is the tight end on the right side of the formation. Hogan looking to the right. Comes in underneath. And uh, he hit Kajust. Devin Kajust that time. And there's a penalty flag down. That flag came in late. It's down right around the 30-yard line. I think the referee himself threw that flag. During the play, little block in the back. Offense on the 76. 10-yard penalty, second down. And that's... Kevin Danzer that he ID'd. It's a big, big mistake there by Stanford. Boy, they have there's a blind. There's the blind. That's the reason. It's look at the official staring at it. You'll see him throw his flag right there. Good call right on top of it in a crucial mistake if Stanford can't keep this drive alive. They kind of, for the first time since this second drive, they had some momentum going there, and then they set themselves back there with a penalty by Danzer. The highly touted freshman Pete is back in at left tackle on this second down. Young and keeping his Hogan breaks free across the 30-yard line for a big first down. They have Kelsey Young in the backfield, and this is a nice read by Kevin Hogan. Kelsey Young's going to grab the attention of David Gilbert. And when Gilbert took Young away, nice job by Hogan pulling it away from his running back. This is something they've not shown the entire game. A little zone read. Good job. You can see the lineman getting up to Mike Taylor, the linebacker, and a nice wrinkle that time by Pep Hamilton here late in this game. Something they haven't shown the whole ball game. Now another of the talented freshmen, Kyle Murphy, is into that offensive line. They look like a jumbo set, and they run Taylor behind it. And now they're starting to wear down the front. Down to the 20-yard line on that first down. And they are substituting tackles and guards now on the Stanford side and muscling. And they're also doing a good job of being more aggressive with the play calling. We've seen them go to empty. We've seen them try to mix up their first their, their formations and personnel groupings. Been more aggressive. They're getting in and out of the huddle a little bit more aggressively. I think they sense that this is a crucial opportunity and a big drive here for both of these teams late in the fourth quarter. Here they come again. And they are short of the first down. It's going to be third down. Okay. 
missed eight straight third downs, but have a much better chance here on third down and one. Wilkes is back in as one of the offensive linemen. They continue to substitute in that front. They've got third down in a yard. Wilkerson is going to be your running back. Toss play to Wilkerson to daylight. First down and out of bounds. At the 12-yard line, Johnson gets him out of bounds. Great call here by Pep Hamilton, David Shaw, Wisconsin pinching, anticipating the inside run game. And whether it was a bootleg naked or just get it to the outside, like a quick pitch there to Wilkerson, something to the edge was a gutsy call and the right call that time on third down and short for Stanford. Stephon Taylor back in the lineup for the Cardinal. Ward is the fullback. Taylor, and he is hit in that backfield. Fine defensive play by Pat Muldoon, the redshirt junior from Mason, Ohio, St. Xavier High School. Yeah, that's a powerhouse program, one of the best in the country. Steve Speck does a really good job there at St. X, but well, this is a nice job of him just slipping off of his, of his block and being able to get into the backfield. They've talked all week to us about one of the ways to slow down Taylor is obviously getting penetration and getting upfield Muldoon able to do that there on first down and on second down Hewitt checks back in as the fullback he's also an outstanding receiver he's a lead blocker this time and Taylor still going Taylor with his best running of the day in this drive is across the five yard line but he seems to be finding his own rhythm we're talking a lot about kevin hogan but this power running game you need a guy who can get through some tackles wisconsin knows it's coming still cannot be able to make the play that time desmond southward came in clean had a chance to keep him to a short game but he's able to pick up some tough yards there to give him a chance here on third down this is where Ertz and toilolo are very effective this is the 11th play of this drive Hewitt is off to the left. They're going to bring him in motion. Roll the pocket to the right. Fire high, too high. Toy Lolo, even at 6-6, could not get up in the air. Herbie to grab it. Yeah, they, they've done this all year where they love to get the tight ends isolated and put him one-on-one. -on -one. Toy Lolo at 6-8. Again, Ertz at 6-6. He's just got to make the right read. And Toy Lolo just a little bit too high, tries to extend himself. And you like what Hogan's thinking. I got a guy at 6'8". Let's put it up in the air high where he's got a chance to make the play. But that is a huge stop by Wisconsin with 4.26 to go in this game. Now it's Jordan Williamson, 22-yard attempt. Zaklinski, the punter, will put it down. Perfect. It's a six-point lead. And twice the Badgers have held Stanford to field goals. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Tires that go the distance make Goodyear a fan favorite. Goodyear, more driven. Wonderful scene here in Pasadena. And this crowd got its money's worth as we send along a happy new year. It's already 2013. The Badgers down by six in front of 93,359. White and now Gordon is back to return this kickoff also. So a couple of the speedier Badgers are back on this. And this is Gordon. And White's going to have him just let it go out of bounds. The BCS on ESPN, available live anytime, anywhere, on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com. Now with the Watch ESPN app. Which brings to mind a, a note that I was told that Stanford became the first football team to put their playbooks on an iPad. Every player on the Stanford team, they have all their plays and the game plans are sent to them 
on their iPad. That's it's amazing how far technology has advanced here. Not a shock that Stanford would be the pioneer <laughs> of that. Maybe they got a discount. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to step aside. 4:23 left when you come back, and the Badgers down, but only by six. Welcome back to the 99th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. First down and 10. Phillips, the Badger quarterback. Jet sweep, Gordon. Cuts, breaks a tackle at 30. And he is out of bounds at about the 37 yard line. A first down run on their first down play great call here by Matt Canada we've not seen Monte ball very effective here in this second half in fact only 11 yards rushing in the second half I love the fact that they go to the perimeter run game with a jet sweep not only does it pick up the first down something to just try to keep in mind for this Stanford defense especially the linebackers and defensive backs now they bring back in Monte ball the hammer and he twists his way to the 39 yard line on that first down run and David Perry the nose man with another stop can't help but think about Kurt Phillips and what he did to just be out on this field three reconstructed surgeries to his right knee it's been talked a lot about the hours that he put in rehab to try to come back and only to get hurt again and come back and get hurt and here he is with a chance to try to drive his team to a victory white checks in Gordon on the sweep the other way and Gordon close to a first down to the 45 yard line so here comes up third and short with 318 left on the clock Badgers trail it by six Barry Alvarez has to consider four down territory right now if he gets stuffed by this defense in front of Stanford he's got to at least think about it after that last drive by the Cardinal Straight ahead. Ball. And I believe he got the first down. I think he'll get the spot. And let me check that. That was James White who had checked in from the sideline that time. And I believe he got it. Stanford on these short yardage situations doing a really good job of jumping the snap count and anticipating the run and shooting the gaps. Wisconsin fortunate that time to be able to pick up that first down now they get back to first and ten you're under three minutes you got two timeouts back in the shotgun they're gonna have to make something happen eventually in the passing game roll the pocket to the left Phillips with an underneath completion to midfield so they pick up four plus yards on that and Kenzel Doe He's a sophomore from Reedsville, North Carolina. Makes that catch for the Badgers, and now second down at midfield. Clock winds down close to two minutes now. Aberderis at the bottom, one-on-one -on -one with the freshman. Phillips fires middle, intercepted. Picked off at the 41-yard line by Uswa Amanam, who has made a couple of big plays in this. Remember way back in the first half? When they missed an interception, well, they didn't miss this time with Manum, and that's the first turnover of this very well-played Rose Bowl game. Brent, it's a great interception by a Manum, but let's also give credit to the defensive line. Josh Morrow in the middle gets his hands up right there and knocks that ball away. The deflection at the line of scrimmage by Morrow sent the ball actually away from Pedersen into the waiting arms of a man up, and he comes up with a big interception. The ball is bounced sometimes in favor of Wisconsin off the, the, the tip ball, and this time, of course, it falls in favor of the Cardinal. Now the Badgers will have to think about using their timeouts as they attempt to stop the Cardinal in an effort to get the ball back. Taylor, who ran so very well on that last drive, takes it now to the 45-yard line on that first down run. Now we're inside of two minutes. And they've got to stop the clock and not let so many seconds no. run away here if they're going to stop this drive. They've got to stop the clock. They're just coming down hoping that 
They're going to give them this first down and the first play, and it basically comes down to whether or not Stanford can get a first down. You have two timeouts left. Letting it go, letting it go here means that Barry Alvarez is waiting for second, and if they can get the third down to use their timeouts. Bringing the play clock down. Hogan milks it. Hands off, and now Taylor breaks free for a first down. Clock stops briefly. I see if they got the spot. I may have. Uh, I think it's short. Now you got to use short. Now you use your second timeout, which they do. Clock is stopped with one minute. He thought for a moment that they had the first down, and that's why he did not call that timeout immediately. I think you can read his lips. Remind everybody to discover Orange Bowl. Coming next with Jordan Lynch. Very good running quarterback, over 1,700 yards. Big game for him tonight against the Seminoles. Let's take a look now at our Taco Bell touchdown spotlight. We go to the Cardinal and we go on their first two drives, Herbie. Yeah, the first couple drives, it looked pretty easy for them. Just a little reverse here to Kelsey Young for a touchdown. And Cardinal were starting fast. They had a big pass play to set up, set up uh, Taylor's first touchdown. And then it got pretty defensive after that. It's been tough sledding for both teams. One field goal here. The second half of this ball game, third down. Now Hogan. Taylor's behind Hewitt. Taylor for the first down easily across the 45-yard line. And Coach Shaw and the Cardinal are headed for a Rose Bowl triumph. We'll be right back with the Ford BCS postgame show and Rose Bowl trophy ceremony. Don't forget that that's coming up next. A remarkable, remarkable job by David Shaw and the Stanford Cardinal in a year where they lost not on, not only Andrew Luck, but their top three receivers. Nobody thought they'd ever get to Pasadena, let alone secure a victory for David Shaw. Three straight BCS Bowl games for this program. Remarkable. Did not come easy today. They were in a dogfight with the Badgers. And the Wisconsin just could not move the football effectively against this Stanford defense. And in the end, they committed the big turnover, the game's first turnover. And hugs all around as Stanford pours onto the field. David Shaw wins his first Rose Bowl as a head coach. Barry Alvarez loses his first after three victories. Let's go down now to Heather Cox and the winning coach. Thanks so much, Coach. Congratulations. First Rose Bowl Sorry, since 19... Well, we're going to do an interview real quick. One quick interview, Coach. First Rose Bowl since 1972. What does that say about where this program is? It, it, and to be honest, we're still on the ascent. We can still play so much better, and that's our charge now is to take this victory, celebrate it, but get ready to, to buck up and play better next year. Coach, you told us that you don't have a lot of lows and a lot of highs. Can we finish here? <laughs> Guys, I'm being told that Coach needs to go to the trophy presentation, friend. All right. Are you Heather, kidding? Heather, thank you very oh, much. Yeah. And, uh, that's a, that's a little bit unfortunate because it had been set up this the winning coach would do an interview but uh, you know communication fails from time to time and nobody is told but let's go to uh, Tom Rinaldi now Brent thanks very much alongside Kevin Hogan Kevin week nine you took this team over all you did was beat ranked teams four weeks in a row now Rose Bowl champion how do you explain the journey um, if, I, if I could have said that I planned it like that I, I'd be lying but uh you know, the transition, having being able to hand the ball off to Stephon Taylor, having a great offensive line up front made the job a whole lot easier for me. And uh, I can't say enough about the, the teammates around me. Uh, we just all came together after uh, that loss to Notre Dame. And uh, 
you know, won the Rose Bowl. Nobody wanted to be the guy that had to succeed Andrew Luck. Ultimately, you did, and you succeeded to him. Uh, Andrew's a great player. It's always hard to, to follow uh, in, in someone like that's footsteps. But like I said, uh, it, it's easy when you get to throw the ball to Zach Ertz, Drew Terrell. So uh, it, it's really not a, as hard as it looks. Congratulations, Kevin. Well Thank done. You. Heather? All right, we've got Coach Shaw again. Sorry for the miscommunication. Thanks for joining us again. Coach, before the game, you told me that you never have real highs and you don't have lows and that sometimes it can be a curse. Are you allowing yourself to be a little bit emotional now? Uh, not yet. I'll get that way in the locker room. I'll get that way in the locker room. But these guys, they deserve this one. We fought hard to the end. And uh, a lot of people didn't give this Wisconsin team credit, but they're a good physical football team. They played extremely well, well coached. And our guys just finished the game at the end. And that certainly showed in the second half when it really became a defensive showdown. Offense came to a standstill. At that point, how did your philosophy and mindset have to change? You know, we just wanted to execute better. We were not going to change our game plan. We wanted to execute better. And, we, and that last drive, we finally did it. We finally blocked the guys we were supposed to block. Stephon hit the ball great. Uh, Wilkerson helped us out a bunch, and our guys played extremely well. And your defense was phenomenal. What was your reaction on that final interception? And I would just, to be honest, relief. <laughs> relief. We talked about it at halftime. We got our hands on five balls in the first half, and it's unlike us to intercept those, not to intercept those balls, and we finally got one. Go have some fun. Celebrate. Now we'll let you go to the trophy presentation. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> All right, Heather. Great job down there. And, uh... Herbie, uh, your final thoughts here on this Rose Bowl. Just uh, people that have not seen Stanford's program, I hope people understand and recognize the program that they have become. Jim Harbaugh started this. People thought they would go away when Jim Harbaugh went to the 49ers. People thought they'd go away when Andrew Luck left to go to the Colts. This program with David Shaw in command with two great coordinators, this program, as he said, is still ascending. They're still growing and becoming a legitimate BCS power program. Three straight BCS bowl games, and I think this win sent a message to America. Well, we'll stay right here for our trophy. I'm always amazed when Ceremony you think and, uh, as they get everything ready down there with Chris Fowler and the gang will be coming along with a presentation of the most valuable offensive and defensive players. A great celebration by the Stanford Cardinal. And of course, after we finish with our post-game show, we're going to send you down Miami way for the Discover Orange Bowl between Northern Illinois and Florida State. Welcome to the Ford BCS postgame show. Well, we welcome you back as Stanford finishes off a 12 and 2 season with a Rose Bowl victory over Wisconsin. And they're all getting ready down below to get the trophy. So let's send you to Chris Fowler. Chris. Brent, thank you. Another suspenseful Rose Bowl, folks. And joining me on the stage is Mr. Ben Wong, the president and CEO of Vizio, and Sally Bixby, the 2013 Tournament of Roses president, who will present the Rose Bowl trophy to a soaking wet but very happy Coach David Shaw of Stanford. Sally? So, Coach Shaw, I would like to congratulate you on winning this exciting game. Thank you. David, congratulations. Joined by your family up here. It's been more than four decades since the Stanford team has won that beautiful trophy. What are you most proud about this performance today? And most importantly, I'm proud about how we fight. Our guys fight. We, it's not always pretty. It's not always perfect. But we never stop. We always keep going. And you know what? We finish where we start. Many people said... This wasn't going to be possible. You lose your, your great quarterback, Andrew Luck, to the NFL. I guess this game today befits the Stanford personality, doesn't it? There's no question. There's no question. We play as a team. We play as a team. Uh, we'll have guys graduate. We'll have guys leave again. But we'll charge them back up and get, ready, get after it this winter. This was a game for the defenses. No first downs in the third quarter. Hanging on to the lead. How much faith did you have in your group at the end holding that six-point lead? We just truly believe since that, that Notre Dame game, we, if we know if we get close at the end, we have a chance to win it. Our guys will pull through. David, 23 and 4 now in, in two years here. What does this say about the, the overall health of this Stanford program? You've been seeking national respect for a while. We still feel like we don't have it, so we're going to come back and charge after again next year. It's good to keep that chip on the shoulder, but I think more people 
realizing how good a program this is. David, congratulations to the Cardinal champions of the Rose Bowl. Let's bring in now the offensive and defensive players of the game. Tournament of Roses offensive MVP is Stefan Taylor. It was a grind that out defensive game. Your longest run from scrimmage was 10 yards, but you finish up with 88 hard earned yards. You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Uh, I mean, we knew it was going to be a physical game coming in. And all I can say, I love my teammates. It was, at times, it had to be a frustrating game for the offense as you guys really couldn't move the six there in the third quarter as you're trying to protect the lead, take us into the mindset there as you finally got that, that drive to go up six. Yeah, I mean, we were coming out wanting to score, but I mean, if we didn't, uh, we, we knew our defense was going to do well, uh, like they have all season, uh, keeping us in games. But I mean, we know what we need to do. We need another first down, and we got that, and then we got the win. Talk about your young quarterback, Kevin Hogan. Not easy to be a young guy and handle this big stage and the pressure. Made enough plays today. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been doing that ever since he's been starting. Uh, you know, he's carrying his team, making it making it a real dual threat, you know? And come in these big games and just and just play his heart out. I mean, we, I respect him a lot for that. All right, congratulations. A hard-earned offensive player of the game, Stephon Taylor. The defensive player of the game, the man who sealed it with the pick, Usua Amadam, and, and this, was, this was a defensive kind of game. You're being serenaded by the teammates behind you here. Yeah, um, it was. I think we knew coming into the game, um, I mean, both both defenses had upwards of a month to prepare for our offenses. So I think we knew it was going to be a defensive battle, and um, thankfully we came out on top. You go offensively, you couldn't punch it in to build a 10-point lead, so you knew they were going to get the ball back with a chance to win. They got to midfield. Take us through the interception that, that sealed it. Um, it was a max drop. Uh, I just had my spot drop, and I, I followed the quarterback's eyes. Um, the rush, the rush got to the quarterback. I think someone tipped the ball. I'm not sure who, but I just happened to be at the uh, right place at the right time. I mean, one single play didn't win the game, but fortunately, that kind of sealed it. All those hours of tape study put you in the right place at the right time. Talk about the big guys up front that did such a good job all season long, not just today. Oh man, all year um, they make things they make things for us on the back end really easy. So um, I'm really I'm really grateful for them, and I can't wait to play with them again next year. So Stanford, a rugged, hard-earned Rose Bowl victory, the third straight decided by a touchdown or less. Congratulations once again to David Shaw and the Cardinal. Brett, back up to you. All right, Chris, thank you very much, and congratulations to the Stanford Cardinal, their outstanding coach, David Shaw, and the great players who did such a job today against Wisconsin in a real hard-fought Rose Bowl game here today. They win it by six points, and there's David Shaw's little boy in his arms along with the trophy. And to the winner goes the Gatorade bath. We'll be right back.